What do you think of this old girl? So you got yourself a real solid automobile. <laughs> Spacer and new gasket, so we'll just take the we'll just take the whole carburetor off. Carb? Hello. <laughs> no, I don't need your carb. Hi. What are the plans for today? Well, today we're doing a little bit of work on the duster. If you remember in the startup video, this I mean again, this carburetor, this car sat for 20 years plus. The accelerator pump diaphragms are just hard as a rock, so they need their place. So you guys can knock that out. We'll do that today and then we will move over and we'll start taking the brakes off. We're gonna you mean convert. those aren't staying? <laughs> we're gonna convert the car to disc brakes. Those have to go. And then we're gonna probably take the back ones off as well. So, so right now it's a four wheel drum car and we're gonna make it into four wheel disc. So we got mufflers too, we got mufflers here. So we might test fit the mufflers and uh, you mean you're gonna make it quieter? It's pretty rowdy, and I certainly wouldn't want to drive around on the street. <laughs> That's gonna make it slower. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There's a nut in between there. I see what he did. That's not supposed to be like that. Yeah, you gotta get an Allen wrench and take that out. Okay. That's not installed correctly. There's a, <laughs> nut, there's a nut underneath there. Butch, we're catching, we're finding all your hackery. <laughs> Got these fancy transmission see now. line kit. Now we have another problem. You see, the uh, idle mixture screw is sticking out too far, so we have to turn that in. Right? Much better. Now we can get a carburetor rebuild kit from Mark at A1 Auto Parts. <laughs> look, at these, look at how skinny these are. Those are skinny. Right? Thanks to us. You're yeah. gonna put two fifteens uh, on the front like pimp my ride. Look good. Yeah, look God. Good. There's right. a reason we were able to talk you out of it I'm so put quickly. One ninety fives on the front, thank you, and it would have been fine. Okay. So you are going to do that gasket, that gasket, which are in here. You're gonna do the sight plug, which is what these are. I should have kept that six hundred CFM marine carburetor. Mm -hmm. I think it was ready to go, ready to bolt on. There people after the swap meet, there were comments in the swap meet video who actually needed that carburetor. Well, I mean, it's a carburetor, you know, you, you can bolt it on and it was ready to go. It didn't have to be on the boat, but apparently- I saw a lot of dirt, uh, dirt people, yeah. Right, people. apparently they're tougher. Yes. yes. They are better. Well, Which that they, makes a lot well, of yeah, sense. Yeah, think about it. They're less prone to bouncing because boats are constantly bouncing. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think the floats are different and then the venting is so different. Those are good for when you're doing a wheelie all the way to the, eighth mile and you don't you know the carburetor doesn't run out of fuel when you're on the bumper i thought that was very interesting it was it is, do i just take it off now uh yeah it should come off there no look i've never done this before either i've just watched my dad do it yeah it was only four yep uh oh well that just disintegrated so we're gonna need a new vacuum cap back here that just completely yeah. just fell apart yeah it's pretty toxic over here no cap do you have a dead little hammer here? Um, yes. I did. Just kind of tap it right here and it'll, it'll come right apart. Now, I will say this. It is easier to do these while the bowls are still attached. Okay. Because then you're not fighting the bowls moving around. Okay, so do we do that like you could first do it at the class? Where does that go do again? Since you already have these out, I would just go ahead and take, the, take it apart. Oh. And um, we, got, we got to do these gaskets. Oh. There you go. Oh, it's already got blue gaskets. Huh. Well, I'll be gosh darned. Oh, no way. It's got good gaskets. Hmm. So we'll check the, so this is the metering block. So usually you can just very carefully just, you just twist it. Yeah, that's it. So this is a cork gasket and you know how I love cork gaskets. Cork. So that's your metering block. So that's what determines how much fuel gets in the engine is. That's yeah, an old black one. So those are your jets. So this is, this is, that determines how much fuel gets actually into the engine right here. So these are main jets. So mm -hmm. when someone changes jets, it's these right here. Okay. And that's where they go. That's, this is called a metering block. So this is what meters all the fuel through the carburetor. If you ever find yourself changing jets in New Jersey, I was wondering you might make a joke. 
you and might be careful. You're obviously, you're going to have to scrape that off, and this is probably not going to come off too good. But. Yeah, you just want to be careful. They're just old, so these are actually, they're very flexible still. So it could be an emergency spare. Those go in a toolbox. That's what those are for. <laughs> okay, so open up your package, and so put your moving block one on first. Um, there is little, there's little pegs here. So you can actually set the gasket on there and then. So when it comes to the stock eliminator stuff, mm -hmm. you have to, you're obviously running three carburetors. Mm -hmm. So you're only limited to like, what, what size are your three carburetors? Uh, my, my, it's a total of like 1,350 CFM. Oh God, is it really? Yeah, total. Now my, my middle one I think is 600 and I think the outers are uh, 350 a piece. That would get so confusing to me to have, because you have jets in each one, right? So. No. No? I only have I only have a metering block like this on the center carburetor because because oh. it's the same deal. If you, if you the three carburetor setup, if you think about it, they've just taken the secondaries mm -hmm. and split them off. Oh, because ninety nine percent of the time when you're driving around, you're only going to use those primaries. Yeah, and you got to remember on a, on a six pack yeah. or a tri power, you know whether it's Pontiac, Chevrolet, or, or Chrysler, those outer carburetors were vacuum operated, so they didn't do anything until you went basically wide open throttle. And then vacuum is what opened those secondaries. I got so, you. Whereas this is obviously a mechanical secondary carburetor. So when you do this, it's gonna open. So this is what's called a progressive linkage. So you can see that the primary, the primary is doing much more. So this is your drivability right here. And then when you really wanna go, you can see that the primary is now open three quarters at least, but the secondaries have only just started. Mm -hmm. And then of course, then it, what happens is it starts to catch up. You, you see how, yeah. at the end, you see how fast it moves? Yeah. Well, that is dictated by this cam right here. There's, there's actually a cam right here and you can replace these. And the shape of this cam right here is what determines the rate of opening um, bo on both of them. So I you can see it right that. here. So you can adjust the rate of opening on primary and secondary just by replacing these cams. And each cam has three different positions. So, I mean, the, the, the possibilities are endless. And the tunability. Tunability, and it's, it's easy to get lost, too. Um, <laughs> you know, in a drag race scenario where it's either wide open or it's not, eh, it doesn't really matter. But we got a street car. Yes, a street car, those, those cams can make quite a difference on how it drives and, and how the engine accelerates. And it'll slide onto the pegs. There you go. And then you put your bowl gasket on, you can bend the bolt back What you want to make sure is you, you always want to check. I'm going to do this. Make it easier for you. Oh, sorry. Um, what you want to do is you want to make sure this is up. Okay, so that has to be up. So sometimes it's easier to do it like this because the accelerator pump arm has to sit underneath this. And a lot of people don't pay attention. You put the bowl on like this, and then, then this will not go past it, so. And then this is adjustable too. So this adjusts how much pump shot you get. You wanna make sure there's a gasket in place. So sometimes the gasket comes off. You see this one's missing? Mm -hmm. So that means there should be a screw that has one on it. I didn't get those, I should've got those. And I'll tell you, if these don't go in with a finger, then stop. These should always go in very easily. I mean, you should be able to just spin them with one thumb, so. If those don't go all the way in until they touch with your fingers, you've got something <laughs> wrong. This right here is where you check your float level. What, what we would normally do is, like when the engine's running, when the fuel pump's running, you would take the screw out and if fuel dribbles out, just barely dribbles out, you know the float level's right, okay? The way to cheat that is you put these little, put these little windows in and then you can actually see what's going on in there. So these are actually clear. Yeah. So we're going to take both of those out and we're going to put those in and you just finger tighten them in. So what does it mean if your float level is too high? What does that mean you need to do? So if your float level is too high, that means that uh, you're trying, what's, what'll happen is it'll end up pushing fuel out this vent. Um, you take that Which typically out. means your needle and seat stuck, right? Or well, just... It can be. Can it be. can be. It absolutely can be. Or it can just be maladjusted. It can be out of adjustment. So. If your needle and seat is out of adjustment, so that's how you obviously you have how you adjust your float level. The correct way to do it is to take actually the bowl off, and you actually set the distance on the inside of the bowl. I don't like setting like this, but you can. Now let's say you look in there and you don't even see your float level, meaning that so you would you would loosen that up and then you would uh, turn that in. Which the further down you make the adjustment, so that pushes the float down, which pushes the fuel level up. 
I got you. These are kind of a nice little. Well, you, usually these just come on carburetors, like new carburetors, all the new ones, they have that. Yeah, yeah they pretty much all have windows now. Correct side. Okay, so now what are we doing? <laughs> I'm taking this piece off. <laughs> That's the accelerator pump. The accelerator pump. Yeah. So that diaphragm in there is rock hard from sitting and we need to replace it. And when you hit the throttle, that arm pushes that down or up and that's what squirts fuel into the engine basically. There you go. Oh my goodness, it's my day. There you go, yep. Yeah. Not very flexible anymore, so. Yeah, because that gives the spring something to sit in. So it basically has mm -hmm. a cup. They all have lock washers on them too. <laughs> Butch. <laughs> we don't need those. Those can go away. In case you blow the carburetor off. Right. I'm gonna take the lock out of the washer. <laughs> so you just need that little Allen. Allen. Allen socket. Allen bolt. I went to I went to high school with Allen bolt. Wait, is this the intake that I traded? No, you no. traded the street dominator. Oh, this that's is the, the strip, strip dominator. dominator. Man, imagine what I could trade for that. <laughs> oh, Get this, two consoles. This, this is single plane. Yeah, this is the real deal. Oh, do you have to set it right next to the broken cab corner? <laughs> no, no, no. That's actually worse. The fixed side's worse. No, please don't. No, it is not. This one doesn't have wheels. Yeah, so it, that. it was going to live there. Oh. That'll be my... Well, <laughs> it appears our choices of organization are starting to uh, go against each other. Success. Hey Jeff, you need a lift. Oh my gosh, those are perfect. So I need some hangers, so those are the same diameter, so. I could probably tack all these on today and hear what this thing sounds like. Yeah, I would love to hear what oh. those sound like. That's been laying on the header. But we should start it up before and after. Well, I have a decibel meter on my phone. So, no, you're right. You we, would have a decibel meter on your phone. It's just an app. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Tell you what, we put just two tack welds on there. We can hear this thing. But that, that location's just, I don't know, I'd like to put a little, I'll probably put like a 12 inch piece of pipe and try to get the mufflers like here. Allison's are clear back here. Hers are right here. Mm -hmm. Look, see? Hello? Oh yeah, it works. I saw one seven. It said yeah. loud. 113. 119 was the loudest I saw. Okay. Oh. Right, good job. Two weeks, I was really Okay. That's not nice. I haven't been nice. <laughs> Why? Why? That's not nice at all. You need a little help under there a little more? You show the people how you really are, and then they're, you know, they're going to turn on you. <laughs> Okay, muffler install complete. Well, I said um, half complete. Tacked in. Tacked in. Oh my Much God. better. So much better. Yeah. That sounds like that. That sounds really good. It does. Sounds a lot better. It's kind of unfair because but we're inside. If we were outside, it would be even better. But that, I, that has great sound. It yeah. does. It sounds a lot better. Wow. Great purchase. Sounds a little more like the dart, actually. Yeah. Those those sound. I'm impressed. Yes.
sounds so much I'd better. say in the 105 range. Yeah. Where is that? That's Jake's. So here's the mufflers we used. Right here. Very happy with those. They sound really good. Not bad. Yeah. No. It's better than open header. Anything's better than open header. Yeah. Drum brakes 101. So that is a dust cap but that protects the bearing. So you just put a screwdriver in there and you pry that dust, dust cap off. What do they call it castle nut? That just pulls straight off now. So all that does is keep the whole this nut from spinning backwards. Now this nut should probably be finger tight. I mean, because they're not really supposed to be tight. But sometimes you just got to break it loose with a tray. Pull on the drum just a little bit and that bearing is going to want to come right out. Okay, now push the drum back in, now grab that. There's a washer. There you go, there's a washer. And then pull it out a little bit more. Yep, there you go, grab the bearing. There you go. Yeah. Now I'll pull the whole drum off. What a professional. There oh, you go. Well, that's really easy. Yeah. Imagine the weight savings. Yep. Oh my gosh, no kidding. Now comes the hard part, that was the easy part. So start with your lightest spring, so you take your needle nose and you pull this spring until it pops out of this hole. There you go. All right, now, so this is the adjuster that keeps the brakes always tight. So if you pull out on this, you can actually twist this in. See, so what happens is when you're driving down the road, brake shoe lining right here, sorry. Mm -hmm. As that wears away, so there's not a big, so that you don't have a spongy pedal, what happens is this keeps clicking. As you, further you push the pedal out, this will click and it's self-adjusting. It's really cool. So anyways, for us to get it back out, you just pull this and then undo it. And that just comes out like that. These springs are keeping the pad tight against what this is called a backing plate. So this, this, so this is not rubbing the drum as the drum is spinning, right? You don't want this rubbing against it. So this spring, if you see when I pull that, it compresses that spring. There's a pin, my finger's on the back side of the pin. I push this in and then rotate it 90 degrees and it pops right out. And now the shoe comes out. There you go, there you, go. you got it. <laughs> nice. Okay, now, so we're gonna be fighting all these springs, all these springs that were are keeping all this together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the pad and just turn it. And it'll come out of, it. this spring is what's holding you up. Mm -hmm. So pull it off of this pin at the top, pull it straight that way. There you go. There you go. So all these pins, all these springs come out from off. This is the brake cylinder. And when you push on the brakes, fluid comes into the cylinder and then pushes these out. And that's what push these against the drum. So these would actually pivot on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. And these would actually go like this. That's how drum brakes work. So the other wheel bearing is actually sandwiched in here. So you have an outer wheel bearing, which sits right here. And then you have an inner, inner wheel bearing right there. And you have a, a seal. You're going to laugh, but I guarantee you I can sell them drums. Oh, I'm sure you can. Because someone who's trying to keep one of these cars somewhat you know, original. original would want the larger 10 inch drums versus the nine inch drums, so. Wow. Good. It's a lock nut. There you go. This bolt's gotta come out. All right, now it's all yours. There you go. Here you go. So the way to, way to protect these is I always like to spin the nut back on yeah. here because the last thing you ever want to do is, is mess up these threads. Look who's in the shop, checking out the dust pan. The dust pan. What do you think of this old girl? <laughs> it's a jewel, man. It's a good old car. Any old muscle car from the 70s that's solid is... Yeah. Well, we don't have them in Ohio. Right. They just don't exist anymore, so... Yeah, it was it was a cool find. Yeah, it's a fairly quick car, too. Yeah. Like, Back in its day, 11, what was it going, 1120s? Yeah, I think in the 20s on a good day and probably in the 40s, 50s in the summer, you know? But, I'd I mean, you gotta you remember how so quick that was back then. Yeah. I'd say you got yourself a real solid automobile. <laughs> <laughs> no. That'd be a nice little project. It'd be a fun street car. It's great, like, we're just learning how to tinker with stuff. Like, this is the first time we've ever taken off drum brakes today, so we learned how to do that. Like I said, yep. you build a carburetor. Yeah. So yeah, we're just learning. Yeah, we got the uh, we're down to the spindles here. So we'll we'll get some brakes on this thing. It will end up being four wheel disc brakes. So no one's developed new drum brakes. <laughs>
Strange have new drums out, Billy. <laughs> hot boy drums. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are the not boys. The <laughs> not boys. Right. Why does every bracket car from the like 80s, 90s have those electric motors that drive the water pump? Well, My dad's car was just like oh, that absolutely. for a long time. Well, that's what I was telling these guys. There that's a cheap way. There were no electric water pumps back then, you have to understand. They yeah. just did not exist. It, and it was a two for one, so you're driving the fan and the water pump, so. Right. I actually sold one of those at the swap meet last weekend or two weeks ago. And here's, the, here's the ignition. So that is the entire ignition right there. <laughs> there is nothing more than that. Is that an MSD5? That is not. <laughs> that, is a, that is a Chrysler Point one Gold. <laughs> gold. Yep. Now, okay, so this is what we call gold box, so which means something to the Mopar guys, but believe it or not. <laughs> so I got an extra one with the car. I took it to the swap meet and I sold it for $150. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, there's guys out there that restore cars to their the way they were when they raced them and they want stuff like that. So. I see a wire nut. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, we got we got a lot of scotch locks. I mean, yeah, these are okay. He's gonna end up rewiring the whole uh, car. I, I guarantee it. I can't. 100%. Well, I mean, uh, and this this. My dad's been here. Starting. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, this is stock stuff. So what happens is in any race car is the stock harness gets spliced and spliced and spliced yeah, and spliced and. Then you end up with this. It is what it is. It's fine. And when you turn the radio on, the water pump comes on. And <laughs> just put an American flag on the roof. Mm. That'd be cool. It's like the. It almost looks like it's the same orange as the General Lee. We have General Duster. General Dust. <laughs> General Dust. All right. Just you don't have to tighten those. Tighten those. Adios. Uh, too much fun. I'm taking my chips with me though. <laughs> You can only get these at the market basket down the street. Those are the good ones. Um, okay, yeah. bye. Uh, yeah. Man, you're getting work done. I can't even keep up. Turn around for one second, the whole car's gonna be apart. Run these Sorry. run these in so they're even. We've got the front ones off, now we're doing the back ones. Weave as in her. You got all the brakes off. I did. You fixed up the old carbonator, the old fuel make it happener. Yep, you're gonna have and to then, take the bowls off Look at it, it's rebuilt. It's completely rebuilt. Bill would be so proud. Put new uh, new carb spacer on there. The old <laughs> other one was uh, kind of falling apart. <gasps> oh. It's gonna make more horse pressure. I just realized why it wasn't idle. Why? Because that vacuum plug's gone in the back. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, I that, about that. So that was a huge vacuum leak. That's why it wasn't idle. So I see you got some leaf springs over here. So that's probably next, huh? Some leafies. Yeah, we got um, we got brakes on order. We have yeah we have everything to do the rear suspension. We've got the cow tracks, leaf springs and the Caltrax lift bars, so um, that's that's bolt on. We have front wheels and tires, which we'll show later. That's your secret. I will order back tires tomorrow. I want to declare one thing up in this video. The duster is his car. We're just, <laughs> we're just helping. Nice. <laughs> it's Jeff's car, we're helping him. We're just helping, that's all. It's not, it's not uh, ours. It's, it's a community car. It's, 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 it's actually Tiffany's mom's. the driver. Jeff's the owner, and we're the we're all mechanics. <laughs> well, we put mufflers on today. That too. The mufflers sound amazing. So, I gotta say, one of the best sounding streetcars ever. When Flowmasters came out and everybody put them on their five liter Mustangs, they just have a certain sound to them, and they sound great. This sounds exactly like that, which makes me very happy. So. It has a really, really good sound to it. They're just tacked in place right now. We just wanted to make sure I liked them before we uh, kind of committed to them. So. But, and then you're gonna add, you're gonna add on like probably yeah, a few more feet to this. Because right now the headers are kind of right under the seats, uh, laterally on the car. They're like right here. Um, and when you're driving down the road, you know at certain speeds you might get a drone in the car that just is not acceptable. So I will move them to about here um, and just get that sound behind you. It'll have great tone to it, great sound, but you don't want it to be annoying. I mean, mm -hmm. We want to be able to drive this thing around. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like the sounds of that. So if anybody wants to buy all these... Uh, 10 inch drum brakes. 10 inch drum brakes. They're actually in really good shape. Yep. I think these back ones are new. I mean, they're still gloss, black. Still there. I just Wrap it up. To... All right. So let me just put the uh, dust can away, not the car. <laughs> Where does the dustpan live? I don't 
Okay, well, we'll find oh, a spot. Right All right, so today we got drum brakes up. <laughs> today we got the drum brakes off. We took the carburetor apart, just put new gaskets in it. Um, started it up with the new mufflers on. We tacked those in just to see how they fit. Uh, so next time we're gonna be doing the cow tracks. We have brakes coming in soon. Brakes coming in soon. Come on! What else we got? Oh, sorry. All right, close it up. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.